everybody, it's Tactic Alex here. This time I'm going to show you how to paint your airsoft or real gun in Pen Cod Devil Dog. You may have seen my other painting styles using Pen Cod Green Zone. As you can see, I have Pen Cod Green Zone here and a little fabric behind it to show you the comparison. I am making this video alongside a pen pod leatherneck paint job video, so you might see some similarities, but I wanted to show everybody a little bit of what I do for each camo color. I am wearing pen cod devil dog. Once again, this is a tactical pullover from O241 Tactical. I highly recommend these. They make them in plenty of camouflage patterns besides the pen cod, but I do like pen cod, so I was very fortunate to get this from them. So I'm going to take you outside. We're going to be painting this old airsoft sniper rifle. And just a reminder that anything I show you on airsoft guns also works on real guns. It's just that airsoft guns are a little bit cheaper, so I don't mind painting them the first time and then doing it on my real guns later. I almost forgot, before we take you outside, let me take you through a list of supplies you're gonna need. So you will need everything you see on the table with the inclusion of blue painter's tape, but I have that outside ready to go. So important thing that you're gonna need for any pen caught style pattern is a sea sponge. Then you're going to want a you know, spray can base coat. The one that I found works pretty well and you can buy this at your local um, hardware store or we got ours at Joanne Fabrics. We got um, Rust-Oleum Almond. All right, that's the color we went with to meet the under, like the base kind of tannish sandy brown coat of the Pencott Devil Dog. Then for our paints, we got the color Sand Dune. For a dark brown, we got raw umber. And then we're going to actually mix these two greens together. And the greens we got are English Ivy Green and Clover. All right, so a combination of these will get us the desired color. Pencott Devil Dog is going to take a little bit of mixing compared to the other ones. So I'll make sure I walk you through those steps as well. All right, so now we are outside getting ready to work on our pen caught devil dog paint pattern. Now, one of the uh, most important parts of this process is to make sure that you have blue painter's tape and you mark off the places on your gun you don't want paint to get. Now, if you watch my pen caught green, green zone video, I go over it in pretty extensive detail, um, but you know, obviously the working parts, you don't want to get near anything. Uh, but then also aesthetically what you like. I like to do my guns in two-tone, uh, you know, have like the paint and then just like a black or a gray or something. You can see an example of that in my leather neck video. For this sniper, I just basically got off any of the moving parts and some of the barrel, but I'm going to leave the barrel black. All right, the rest of it's going to basically be painted. Um, and the reason why I'm trying to choose to do this sniper is a uh, pen caught devil dog is meant for like high plains, like high deserts, right? So there's going to be a lot of open space and like mountains and long range. So I thought long range would be a pretty good theme painting the sniper rifle this color. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit it with our, uh, our initial coat. It is the almond, right? So just shake it up, stand a couple inches away and just give it a nice little spray pretty much everywhere. Watch out for wind. Now, these guns have a lot of different angles on them. So you're going to be one you're going to want to be sure to move around to all sides. Make sure you come from underneath, the front and the back, so that way you get everything pretty well covered. But then again, don't be afraid to make a mistake. Honestly, most of these guns look cooler when the paint starts to get worn away anyway. Now, unless you have this hanging in the air, sometimes you're gonna have to wait to let it dry before you can get the other angles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit. I'll get the bottom and then we'll come back together with the next steps. Oh, 
Okay, so now this is the fun part. All right, this is where you get to be really creative. You're gonna work on doing the digital patterns to PenCon. Now, I took a lot of time observing these to really understand what they were about, and I noticed that each pen cut pattern has a really large underbase. So for a green zone, it's that dark chocolate. For this uh, devil dog, it is that sandy kind of tannish color. And then for leatherneck, it's that brownish uh, red, or the reddish brown. And um, then after that, there's usually another layer on top. For green zone, it was that uh, yellowy brown color. Um, for this one here, for Double Dog, if you look closely, you can see this almost like tan and brown mismatch of things, okay? So it took me a little while, my wife helped me figure out what we want to do to get this pattern. So this, like I said, this one's going to take a little bit more mixing. So what we're going to do first of all, is we're going to start off with our uh, raw umber. So all we need is raw umber and a sea sponge. So what I like to do is I like to rip a chunk of the sea sponge off. Okay, so I've learned the larger, the better. It looks more organic and not like little splotches. So go big, but not too big. I'll show you about the size I like to use. Maybe something like that, all right? And you can use multiple sides for various things. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna pour it onto a styrofoam plate. Let me move my other colors. Now, as I mentioned, there's a little bit of this brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do, follow like a nice pattern of the gun. All right, now these are like fractal designs. So if you wanna you know, see more detail, you can check my pen called Green Zone video out. But basically, I'm gonna follow the pattern of the gun, try to be random, but I don't wanna be uh, too random where it's just splotches everywhere, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna take the sponge, I'm gonna dip it, and you might want to get some paint off, dip it a couple times, just to really see the pores. All right, that's what really matters. Then you're going to take it and just follow your gut. Now, I'm not going to do a ton of this, but you'll, you'll see, you'll see. So I'm going to start from the front and work my way back. Okay, so sometimes you want lighter splotches, or sometimes you want to push heavy, break it up, give it a little bit different. Okay. Don't forget to go around the edges of your gun as well. So, step back, take a look, pull out your green or your uh, your devil dog. See how it looks. I think that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit here and there. But a rule of advice for these patterns is sometimes little is better. Okay. So I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna get the other side. We'll be back in a minute with the next step. Okay. On to our next step. Once we have that nice brown coat. So what we're gonna do next, this is where it gets a little bit creative. So we're gonna take some more of this brown, squirt it onto our plate. And then we're gonna take about the same amount of this sand dune. We're gonna mix it in there. Maybe, there we go. I just used a nice little plastic knife. Mix that up a little bit. We're gonna get this little color here, but to me, I think that looks pretty good. All right, it's like a midway point between these two colors. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our sponge again. All right, now you can use uh, the same sponge, just different sides, whatever you want to do. And if you look very closely at the pattern, these two colors overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow pretty much the exact pattern I just did and mix it with this color. Okay, so let's take a look at how this is going to be. So I'm just following that pattern that I already had. 
Now this is the first time I've done this on a pen caught pattern, but I noticed this about this and I'm trying to keep it as accurate as possible. Work my way around the gun. Don't be afraid to switch up spots on your sponge if you don't like what you're seeing or if you just want some variety. And don't be afraid to stray away from it a little bit if you want to. I'm going to let this dry, get the bottom, and then we'll come back for our final steps. Okay, our final step, besides the clear coat at the end, we're going to mix our English Ivy and our, uh, what is this called? It's a uh, clover, all right, to get the green on here. It took us a little bit of mixing to do, but we kind of came to that conclusion that we think this is going to be the best. I do about half and half. Maybe a little bit more clover, because this is a pretty light green compared to Leatherneck. And I'll just go ahead and mix this up again. You can see this color that's coming out here. Move up to the camera a little bit. And then we're going to take our sponge. We're going to follow the brown. We're not going to go over top of it. We're going to go around it, accent it. All right. So imagine you're dancing around the browns. Pick my good side. There we go. Okay. around show you the other side because you really haven't seen that yet So now we're going to give this thing a chance to dry, and then when I'm done, I'm going to put a clear coat of um, matte, just Rust-Oleum spray. All right, I'm not going to show you guys that in the video. If you really want to see it, you can go watch the Pengar Green Zone one, but uh, I'm going to get this thing taken apart, and I'll show you the final product here in a little bit. Okay, I just finished up the Pencod Devil Dog paint pattern on my gun. What I didn't show is, like I said before, I took a uh, clear coat of matte spray, sprayed it over top just to kind of seal the paint and make it a little bit more durable. And also, I don't want to rub it off of my clothes. But uh, yeah, I want to show you the final product. So here it is, Pencod Devil Dog on the sniper up against the pattern I'm wearing. I have to say it turned out better than I expected. Um, I do want to give a shout out to O241 Tactical uh, for allowing me to be one of the first people in the world to ever wear this pattern. 
That being said, since I am one of the first people in this world, in the world, ever wear this pattern, uh, I'm hoping other people pick this up, and I hope that anybody watching this video goes out and refines the colors. And if you do, come back and comment and put them in my comment section, and maybe someday in the future we can make an update video together. So thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you soon.